So, you're new to Honkai Impact 3rd. You log in, play through the tutorial, and then find 30 buttons on your home screen and end up being incredibly confused. Well, don't you worry, I'm Captain Level 77 and I still consider myself confused. But you can and will figure out what all of these buttons do over time. In fact, that's what this video is for, to explain exactly what you need to know as a new player coming into Honkai Impact 3rd. This is my first Honkai video and I'm gonna try to cover everything there is to know, but of course, I'll pin a comment with any extra information that either comes up later or changes as time goes on. Now this video is going to be absurdly long and there will be timestamps in the description, but I don't want the intro to go on forever. So with that being said, my name is Braxophone and this is my starter guide for Honkai Impact 3rd. First off, if you're super new, I just want to quickly break down some words we're going to be using a lot and some things that you may know from other games that transfer over. The first thing is going to be stamina, which is essentially just a resource that you use to play the game. It's similar to Resin and Genshin Impact if you're from there. Almost every mobile game has it. Generally speaking, you're not going to run into stamina problems at the start of the game because they give you a ton of stamina regenerating items, but in late game you might be more limited. Outside of stamina, weapons are pretty straightforward, but some players get confused by stigmata. Essentially what these are are just extra equipment to give you stat and set bonuses. If you come from Genshin Impact, they're basically just artifacts. The main difference in Honkai is that you don't go and farm a whole bunch of stigmata at a time. You take time to farm out each one individually. There are three stig slots, and oftentimes you'll mix and match stigs based on stats and set bonuses as necessary. They also have a form of substat called affixes, but I don't recommend you reroll those until you really know what you're doing since the reroll resource is pretty precious. That's something I really wish I would have known at the start of my Honkai experience. A lot of new character stigmata are only available through the gacha, but there are usually budgeted craftable versions. You can actually find these in the foundry, same as crafted weapons. You can also click on this recommendation button and it'll give you a list of things that can work. Sometimes they're not actually the best option for any given character, but at the start of the game, you can craft the economic option as a way to sort of get you through the first bit of content before you're able to farm stronger stigs, which I'll get to later. Lastly, unlike some other gacha games, you can actually get certain characters and upgrades without rolling them in the gacha. This is done through fragments, and essentially, once you have a certain amount of character fragments collecting them through either the in-game store, missions, events, whatever it may be, you can actually use those fragments to create or rank up a character, and this is going to be your bread and butter as a free-to-play player. Specifically, you're going to really want to upgrade your Valks. So now that you know kind of just like the basic terminology we're going to use, I want to talk about the new player bonuses. If you're brand new to Honkai, you're going to see all of these and it's going to be amazing. So for this video, I made a fresh account just to sort of verify everything and get footage. Before I started recording, I went ahead and cleared the first chapter of the story. Once you've done this, if you completed all of the challenges like use your ultimate or don't take more than 30 hits, you should be able to claim crystals and bonuses below. When you progress a bit into the game, you're going to get access to a bunch of starter bonuses. These bonuses last 60 days from the creation of your account. So these are not login days, these are days since you made the account. And they're super important if you want to get a huge head start. Now this is one of the most general generous games at launch. They give you so much free stuff, and if you really make sure to go for and complete all the challenges that you can, your account will be in a really good spot. So right off the bat, there's a daily login, and you're going to see this on your account regardless of whenever you started it. It's standard for gacha games. You're going to get it during reset each day at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, as a new player to Honkai, you'll get a ton of bonuses for a short amount of time. The first one is going to be Path to Greatness, which is basically a 60-day bonus for new accounts for completing challenges and content. It gives you a ton of crystals, and I highly recommend maxing that out. Same with the level up sprint. Again, it just gives you a whole bunch of free stuff and it's super helpful. You kind of just level up by playing the game, so I wouldn't sweat it too much as long as you're either playing through the story or doing events or something, spending stamina in some way, you're going to be fine. You're going to level up. It'll be great. Outside of that, you're going to have a seven day login and it's something you'll unlock at level 15. The seven day login gives you a ton of pulls, so I definitely wouldn't miss that. Outside of that, you're going to want to do your starter boot camp. It's a bunch of easy stages that sort of try to teach you how to play different characters, and as a newer player, you actually can learn quite a bit from it. Lastly, I recommend doing your daily prep, since they're going to give you a lot of bonus materials as well. That is something that you're not always going to have access to, so take advantage of the boost it's going to give you. As far as other bonuses go, one other thing that the game doesn't really tell you off the bat is that there's a sensei system. Essentially what it is is just a bunch of missions that give you really good rewards. You don't even really have to do them with your sensei, and to be honest, both the cadet and sensei get a lot of rewards for it, so nobody will 
say no most of the time, you might as well just find one for the bonuses. You'll also get a notification by your bonuses for the Land of Wishes as you progress more. I don't really recommend doing it just because the Land of Wishes will stick around past your 60 day starter bonus time, and you want to put your focus of crystals into the starter supply since that's going to be a limited time thing. Speaking of which, let me tell you about one of the biggest advantages you have on a new account. So I want to quickly talk about Honkai's Gacha. There's a lot of nuance to it, and there's a lot of things that there are to talk about in terms of optimizing your spending. And contrary to popular belief, you can survive and consistently perform well as a free-to-play player if you make the right decisions. First off, when you start the game, the tutorial is going to try to get you to spend 200 crystals on the dorm supply, but if you restart the game, you can actually just skip that step. You don't really ever want to spend any crystals on dorm supply because you're going to get plenty of dorm cards just by playing the game, and what you're really going to want to look at is the starter supply. As of right now, the starter supply contains Hersher of Flame Scion and Hersher of Sentience. Hersher of Flame Scion is a top fire DPS, and Hersher of Sentience is a top physical support, but also an amazing damage dealer. This starter supply is actually super relevant. It has two amazing characters in it, and either one you can't really go wrong with. This supply is essentially what you're going to want to spend all of your early rolls on, until you get one of these rate-up characters, and then if you want to, you can go in on their weapon. For a character like Hersher of Flame Scion, the weapon is actually a large large portion of the character's damage, and they are a top unit, so having their weapon can be really beneficial. But with her share of sentience, she's still a solid unit even without her weapon, so if you had to choose between one of the two, I would say Flame Scions is more important. But that being said, there's a lot of things that can go into that, like the state of your account, and ultimately if you are going to go for a weapon for one character, it would make sense to go for the one that you have the character for. Now if you're looking into re-rolling your account, there's actually a couple things that you should know. First off, re-rolling in Honkai is actually kind of difficult, it'll take a little bit of your time for each reroll and that can actually add up to a lot if you just get really unlucky or don't manage to get the character you're going for. I do think that rerolling in every gacha game as a free-to-play player is always a good thing to look into because getting a good character right off the bat is awesome and it'll really give your account a head start. But with that being said, you do have to play through quite a bit of content on Honkai. I found that when I was looking to reroll on Honkai just to kind of see how long it would take, it would take me till about chapter 2 level 6 for me to really optimize my time and get the most pulls I can. And even then, you don't really get a lot of pulls for rerolling, so just know that if you are going to reroll in Honkai, it will take you a lot of time. If you look at supply after having some story and captain level progression, you'll notice you have access to the expansion supply. If you come from Genshin Impact, this is like your event character rate up banner. It's going to have a featured character rotating in and out every couple weeks, or even every couple days in some instances. One of the biggest differences though is that there's no 50 50 on the expansion supply. That being said, you still want to focus on the starter banner unless the rate up is just insanely good. As it stands now, her Hersher of Sentience and Hersher of Flame Scion are two of the stronger units in the game and definitely worth going for. I wouldn't spend on the expansion supply, I would just focus on the starter one because that's going to be a limited time thing, and I'll pin in the comment if that changes. The weapon and Stigmata Gacha is the focus supply, and the same rules are going to apply for most Valkyries and weapons. You want the Valkyrie first and the weapon and Stig second. The weapons usually have abilities that are hyper specific to that character, and there are some exceptions like Azur Imperia's weapon working on Hersher of Sentience, but most of the time it's going to be that way where you only want that weapon for that specific character. The gacha in Honkai is both friendlier and less friendly than other gacha games. It's kind of weird how it works, but with proper saving habits, free-to-play accounts can actually do really well with this kind of gacha. So now that we've kind of gone over the gacha system in Honkai, I want to go ahead and talk about ways to spend your stamina. And oh boy, there's a lot of them. So as mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are a lot of ways to get stamina, but you do need a way to spend stamina in general. So I'm going to give you some ideas of efficient ways to do that and get lots of rewards. The first one that I would suggest doing is making sure that you go over to your missions. These missions are going to give you a nice little bonus for completing things like chapters of the story or completing challenges within certain missions. Don't forget to claim these. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There are also extra challenge missions that have really solid rewards, and I recommend going for those if you're bored or just looking to get some extra items as well. Eventually, you're going to get dailies unlocked, which essentially are going to give you a sort of point system that unlocks you bonus crystals and XP every day. There are also lots of event rewards tied to getting duty, and it's pretty easy to get if you just play the game. If you just play the game consistently, you're going to clear out a lot of those daily missions. If you're in early game, you're going to also want to check your achievements. You probably have a lot of free crystals, especially if you've already been playing for a little while. You may not know how much of a bank you have 
have stored up and just achievements that you've cleared. Another thing you can do to spend your stamina is go to the dorms. There's a couple things in there that you can do that will cost stamina and get you pretty solid rewards. Once you're actually in the dorms, there's a cute little sandbox mode where you can build rooms and try to raise your Valk's happiness. And also if you do just look around the dorm section, you'll find a bank for coins and stamina. Whenever you're overcapped on stamina, you can generate a bunch extra to take out of a bank for later. But the things you're actually going to spend your stamina on are going to be your expeditions. Expeditions are essentially missions that can be set up to clear automatically and bring you resources once you've completed said expedition with all of the challenges checked off. So essentially you'll have to manually do the expeditions a couple of times just to make sure that you clear all the challenges. But once that's done, you can set up your dorm to automatically take care of expeditions every single day. I usually use expeditions to get Valkyrie fragments and augments, but also for some crafting materials as well. You unlock your first expedition at captain level 18. And then on top of that, you'll also have errands, which will get you dorm shop currency. And those are unlocked at captain level 25. After you progress a bit, you're going to see the events button, but you won't likely be able to do most of them until you're captain rank 20. It doesn't take long to get there really, and I like the Honkai event system a lot, because it doesn't gate you from participating if you haven't caught up on the story. In my opinion, events should be your top priority if you can do them, because there's a lot of limited time stuff that can be super helpful to your account, whether it's crystals, exclusive stigs, or crafting items. Now if you go over to the attack section, there are a ton of different ways to spend stamina, and these are all pretty solid. First off, material events can be found on the attack page once you get to a high enough level and they're essentially a way to get upgrade materials and different currencies that will go over in a bit. You don't have to do these if you're low in stamina, but I found that I can do it daily without any issues right now. You may just find issues towards the end of the game. You can also use this light button to quick clear if you're in a rush and it's super helpful. Right above the material event is co-op raids and these are a super neat concept that are pretty quick and easy to complete once you've gotten some built characters. Sometimes they give you free weapons, which is pretty sick, and I recommend going through raids for the free weapons and also if you need to get level up materials for those raid weapons, just be aware that it can take a lot of stamina to get through a raid. Right beneath story is going to be Chronicles, and Chronicles is a sort of special mode. It's basically a lore based story involving certain characters, but completing each chronicle will get you some good early game rewards and captain XP, especially if you find that you're under leveled or under geared for the main story. And then on the far left is going to be the open world. Now this is one of the most confusing things that I think I had to deal with as a new player, but I'm going to try to simplify it. When you're at a low captain level, you'll have limited access, starting off with Sakura Samsara and Shiksal HQ. But as you level up, you'll also gain access to post Honkai Odyssey. The open world is actually super great for getting crystals and other materials on its own, but you'll also have adventure tasks that give you a ton of great items like rare Valkyrie fragments and crafting materials. You can accept adventure tasks on Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. You're going to get to pick up to five of them, and they have some pretty great rewards. They take a lot of stamina to grab, but the rewards are often worth it. Also, I just genuinely enjoy playing through the open world world story. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but I like the formula and the writing is pretty good in my opinion. Funny enough, story is actually the last thing I find myself spending stamina on. It's a bit of a slow burn in the beginning, but like Final Fantasy XIV, it sort of just takes off and the writing becomes incredible. The story is actually amazing and I highly recommend you play it at some point. That being said, it's not really necessary to play the story to play most of the other content. So if you don't prioritize the story, you're not missing much in terms of account investment. I just think it's worth it because it's a well-written story. In terms of general content, the last major thing I want to talk to you guys about is the challenge content. The first thing is Abyss, which has multiple different variants with different debuffs every time. It's essentially just content meant to challenge your teams and builds, and when you complete it, you're given a score that will determine your rank against other players. The concept of PvP scares a lot of players away from gacha games, but if it helps you feel better, there are free-to-play players who are able to stay in the top 100 in high-end Abyss just through game knowledge and proper investment. Also, regardless of where you place, you're getting a reward just for completing completing it. The higher rank you are, the more crystals you'll get, but it's still a big bonus and I'd recommend completing Abyss every reset, which ends up being every few days. Don't worry about Memorial Arena yet if you're new, it's basically a series of boss fights that's ranked like Abyss. The next thing I want to show you guys is Universal Mirage. I wish I had known about it when I was new, because it's basically the only way to farm certain higher level stigmata. Instead of stamina, it takes an invite of Mirage, which you'll get one of every single day, except on Sundays and Fridays where you'll get two. Whenever you clear a stage, you're going to use an invite and you'll be able 
able to get ether fuel and crystallites of different elements that will let you craft solid stigmata in the foundry. I wouldn't recommend using your swirl passes to pick up extra resources until after you get to floor 5 and 6, but that can depend on what you're grinding out as well. Just because the invites cap out at 6, I recommend using your passes even without any specific stigmata in mind, just so you don't overcap. But with that being said, you can definitely find something to farm for. It can take a little bit of time to get that stigmata that you want to grind out. That should be basically everything you need to know about spending your stamina really early on in the game. There are activities that you'll unlock later, like Elysian Realm for example, but for now you don't really have to worry about that, just kind of focus on the things that I listed. And now I want to move on to stores, currency, and what to buy in Honkai, since a lot of players get confused by all the different types of currencies in the game. So if you go to supply and over to the left, you're going to find the shop button. In the shop, there's tons of tabs, and I mean tons. A lot of these tabs have their own currency, and it can get really confusing to navigate. So I want to quickly break down sort of what's good to buy and what currencies you really need to care about. If you go over to the logistics terminal, you're going to find some discounted stuff. You can buy anything that you need here, but generally I wouldn't spend any crystals here at all. In the exchange shop, you'll find rare stigmata and weapons, a lot of which isn't actually craftable in the foundry. If you're looking for any powerful stigmata like Newton B or Beach May M, or need a weapon to finish a character's build, this is the place where you'll find them, if not in the gacha. To get the currency to trade here, you basically have to salvage rare weapons and stigs, which can seem daunting at first, but as you play the game more, you'll come across some ones that you don't need that'll get you some of that exchange shop currency. On top of that, you can also get some of the currency in adventure tasks in the open world. You can actually refresh the exchange shop six times a week for free so if you're looking for a specific stig you can actually refresh that over and over and then after that it'll cost asteroid and i wouldn't spend any asteroid on this and then below that the dorm shop is going to refresh every patch it's got some decent stuff i would focus on the crystallum first because it can be exchanged for high tier gear and then i would focus on getting the free dorm cards you basically don't need anything else out of it so i would just save up to buy it out each patch the supply shop is kind of a whale shop odds are you're not going to have a lot of the resources to spend out of here and I would avoid spending here unless you know what you're doing. Moving on down to the activity shop now, we have a whole bunch of great stuff. The first thing here on my screen is going to be the Elysian shop. Now you're not even going to get this shop until late game anyway, so you don't have to worry about it, but I use this shop to get Convectrons, the Time Swirl Passes, and the Honkai Cubes. All of the extra stuff just goes to rank up stamps mostly, and you'll get the currency from Elysian Realm later in the game. The War Treasury is a similar deal. You're not going to see it for a while, but when you do, you'll get to use it for Valkyrie Fragments as well as Ancient Willpowers to get more more fragments. This is a super great way for free to play and low spending players to rank up Valks too. You'll get both of these currencies in Memorial Arena and Late Game Abyss, so I highly recommend you do those. The Battle Arsenal takes gold pins to purchase frags for really good Valkyries and Spatial Lenses, and you can get the currency for this from Memorial Arena and Abyss later in the game. Gold pins are also a part of the Material Events section that you can do daily, but they are a bit tougher to get overall. Carol, Fischl, Haxor Bunny, and Starlet Astrologus are all great Valkyries that are worth having and spending those spins on if you don't have anything else that you immediately need. Next is going to be the co-op shop, which is really straightforward. You'll get spirit jades in certain co-op activities like raids for example, and it's used to purchase enhancement items. After that you have the Mirage store, which basically just sells things for and from Universal Mirage to make it a little bit easier to farm for stigmata and weapons. Following that you have the Armada terminal, which has dorm cards and a Honkai cube. There's more than that, but those are the items that I feel are the most important to get. You can also get the elf fragments and enhancement stuff, but it's not as necessary. And the master shop is for senseis, you won't see that for a while, and when you do, you'll know what's good. Now if you go down to the basic currency section, you'll find the asterite and coin shop, and to be honest, this is where a lot of your spending will happen. The coin shop is okay, it has some cheap stuff if you need it, but I typically don't buy much from there. The asterite shop though is gonna have lots of good stuff like Valkyrie Fragments, Augment Cores, and General Materials for crafting. You'll find that most of the time, if you're missing a material, you can get it here. Asteroid is something that you'll get a lot of over time, but it's still a really valuable resource because you're gonna need it to buy so many different things, so I don't recommend spending it unless you see something that you need, like Fragments, or if an event shop comes by that uses Asteroid. Sometimes you'll have something called Time Capsule that has skins and stigmata, and most of the time the stigs aren't super great,
great, but there'll be exceptions to that. I mostly just grab skins because I like having the alternate looks for my characters, but if you're just looking to optimize gameplay, then they're not something that you need. Time Capsule will be in the event shop section with any other event shops that are up at the time. It can be really intimidating to look at all of the different event currencies, but I promise you they're not actually that confusing once you know what the other currencies in the game do, like Asterite, your coins, your gold pins, etc. Once you understand those, the event currencies are going to be very simple to figure out. Any limited time currencies will be spent here in the event shop, and you'll want to try and max out these shops when you can, since they usually have crystals, Valkyrie fragments, and other generally good items. If you made it this far in the video, first off, congrats. I am surprised you made it this far. But second off, hopefully all of this information is going to be helpful for you on your journey through Honkai Impact 3rd. Obviously, there is so much more depth to this game than what I described, and there's so much to talk about with each individual character as well, but I wanted to just get this video out because Honkai Impact 3rd can be an incredibly intimidating game to new players, but I feel like it's a game that is really worth it once you get past all of the initial confusion. So with that being said, if this video helped you, or cleared up any information for you or encouraged you to try out Honkai Impact 3rd, make sure to leave a comment down below and like the video. Of course, if you really want to see more Honkai content as well, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. This has historically been a Genshin Impact channel, but there's so many great games out that I'd love to cover other than Genshin Impact, so it'd be really helpful if you guys would let me know if you're interested in this sort of thing. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later, Captains. Peace!